Hey, this is Aaron Rubinowitz for CreativeCow.net. I am excited. This is my first After Effects CS3 related podcast, and I have to tell you that I'm doing this tutorial a little out of order. I plan on introducing you to and exploring some of the new features of After Effects CS3 over the coming weeks, but I wanted to show you something really cool that you can do with the new Puppet tool right away. And the reason that I want to do that is because I know that many of you are saying, well, yeah, the new After Effects CS3 puppet tool sounds cool and all, but I'm not a character animator, so I probably won't use it. Au contraire, mon frere, I disagree. The puppet tool will be useful to you even if you never plan on working with character animation. And in a moment, I'll give you an example of how. But first, I have to give credit where it's due. The idea for this tutorial came from a conversation that I had with my friend and colleague over at the tool farm, Jim Godoldick. And Jim has also written an article on the same subject, which you can find at both toolsfarm.com and creativecow.net. Anyway, we were planning the next After Effects New York meeting, shameless plug, and Jim had this idea of showing a project workflow between Apple Motion and After Effects in which he would be taking video of particles rendered in motion and then using the After Effects puppet tool on that footage. That made me wonder what I could do directly in After Effects with Particles and the Puppet Tool. But as you'll see, due to certain limitations in the Puppet Tool, that's not necessarily a simple thing. But hang in there, we just might make it work. So like Mr. T says, enough jibba jabba fool, let's get into it. So here I am in After Effects with a picture of a car. What I want to do is show the aerodynamics of the car by having Particles follow the contours of the car. Sounds cool, right? So let's add in a new solid by choosing Layer, New, Solid, and then set it to the same size as the composition, and let's name the layer Particles. The color doesn't really matter, so once that's done, click OK to confirm the creation of the new solid. Next, let's add the particles by selecting the new solid and choosing Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World. This creates a particle system on the solid, but it also makes the solid invisible, showing only the particles. If you scroll through time, we can see the particles appearing over the image of the car. So far, so good. Let me keep my time marker a little further down in time so that I can see some of the particles. Okay. Let's make some changes to the particle system. In the effects panel, twirl down the physics section which reveals a whole bunch of interesting properties. Change the animation property from explosive to direction axis. This makes the particles shoot out in a specific direction. Set the angle from one rotation and zero degrees to one rotation and 180 degrees. This reverses the direction of the particle emission. Set the extra property from 0.5 to zero. The extra property extends the angle of the emission, but in this case, we just want it to go in one specific direction. Set the gravity from 0.5 to 0. This prevents the particles from falling towards the floor. Also, the speed of these particles is a little high, so I'll set the velocity down to 0.5. If I scroll through time, I can see that my particles are now moving in a straight line from right to left at a moderate pace. Okay, let's move the emitter over to the right side of the screen. In the effects panel, twirl down the producer section and slide the position X value until it's just off the screen. Great. Now my particles are dying or disappearing before they reach the left side of the screen. So I want to give them a longer life or what this effect refers to as longevity. So set the longevity to two. Also, Let's change the look of the individual particles. If I twirl down my particles section here, I can see that it's set to use lines as the shape for my particles. I'm going to switch that to faded sphere. Next, I'll set the birth and death colors to a very light gray or maybe even white. You can just use the eyedropper to copy one color from the other. Finally, let's turn off the floor and the little icon in the upper left corner by going back up to the top of the effect in the effects panel and setting the grid option from floor to off. Okay, now here's where things get complicated. We want to use the puppet tool to bend these particles around the contours of the car, but this is not as easy as it sounds. And here's why. The way the puppet tool works is that you have a layer with an alpha channel. 
you select the puppet tool from the top here and when you add the first puppet point After Effects creates a mesh around the object and by adding points you're creating warping points that you can use to deform the rest of the layer so pull on a point and the mesh deforms and this is great for a static that is a non-moving image or rather it works for an image or a video as long as the alpha channel is not changing because it's using the alpha channel to generate that mesh but if the alpha channel is not static meaning that it's animated we run into problems so for example in this video I have a character moving over a transparent background but if I decide to add some puppet points in at some point in the animation like I'm doing here and then I move around some of the puppet points like this as you can see as soon as the character moves outside the space of the mesh things start to fall apart the mesh only works for that one frame of the animation this is similar to our situation where we have particles moving and the particle layers alpha channel is constantly changing because of that which means if we try and add a mesh to bend the particles it won't work because the mesh is only valid for one frame of the entire animation oh well it was worth a shot once again this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net I'm just kidding okay the solution that I came up with is this Let's pre-comp the particle animation by selecting the layer in the timeline and then choosing Layer Pre-Compose. In the Pre-Compose dialog, choose the Move All Attributes option and the Open New Composition option, and then click OK. What we're going to do here in the new pre-composition is set up this animation so that it has a temporary alpha channel that we can use to fool the puppet tool in the main composition. If that doesn't seem to make sense, hang in there because it will in a moment. Choose Layer, New, Solid. In the dialog, pick a color other than black or white. I only say that because the particles are white and the background is black and I want to see both. Once that's done, click OK. In the timeline, place the solid behind the particles and then scale it down to just cover the area that the particles are flying over. Before we jump back into the main comp and finish this off, for extra kicks, let's just add some blur to the particles. Select the particles layer and choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. In the Effects panel, set the blur dimensions to horizontal, and then set the blurriness up to about 40. Okay, jumping back into our main composition, I can see my particles animation with the solid behind it. And with my particles pre-composition selected, I'll quickly add in a few puppet points. As you can see, the mesh has been created in a rectangular shape that covers everything. Not bad, right? So now I can jump back to my particles pre-composition and make the solid invisible. Once that's done, just jump back into the main composition and set up the puppet points to match the shape of the car, like this. Okay then. A quick RAM preview and I can see that my airflow is following the shape of the car. Well there you go, the puppet tool for people who don't do character animation. I think we'll see a lot of really cool motion graphics stuff being done with the puppet tool in the very near future, possibly even by you. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net. Oh, and I pity the fool that don't like the puppet tool. Yeah.